Always a pleasure to welcome John Goins back into the program. You can find him on Twitter at Gourmet underscore hockey. John, I like that you got the Oilers Nation hat on to uh, maybe try to manifest some good fortune for me tonight and the guys in Edmonton. But let's start with those Oilers. Um, it, listen, the Edmonton has never been afraid to play fire wagon hockey and trade chances back and forth. And they've always, or at least traditionally, been good at scoring off the rush. But so far this season, Zero goals scored uh, off the rush, and they lead the league in the most goals against in that category. What's been going on in Edmonton? Why is this uh, script getting flipped here? Here, I'll, I'll answer that with a quick question. Who do you think is tied? Who do you think is tied for no goals off the rush and the most goals against off the rush right now in the NHL? Another team that has similar offense. Colorado. Colorado Avalanche. So... What happens is when the offense and the wheels come off that fire wagon style of offense, what happens? You're going to cheat a little bit. You're going to hope. You guys know I like to say hope and poke at times, right? You, you're not completely engaged in that 200-foot game, which led them to a long, long, and very close to fruitful Stanley Cup playoff run. Right now, it's like... You know, is it a mix of hangover, this, then the next thing, whatever the case may be, whatever is ailing them on offense is affecting how they defend or their engagement defensively. So let's fire up these clips because it's getting U-G-L-Y early and often. Look at this, three forwards down low, hoping, hoping that they come up with the puck and watch how quickly they get beat up ice. You're giving Bedard all this room to cut to the inside and rip it. 200-foot breakout, okay? One stretch pass beats three. Watch Arvidsson on the change. I put that light there because that's where he should be. He should be cutting the ice in half, and he doesn't. He's off. He's on the bench right now. Again, 200-foot breakout. You should be in a good spot here. Watch. Gambrell beat him up the ice. He's going to get up the ice. Boom, under the bar. Like, you're not getting beat by the equivalent of a McDavid. Now here, McDavid's in a battle with Anderson. Why is anybody reloading to the middle of the ice? That's a 50-50 battle. Now it's all about hope and poke. Nobody is touching him. All of a sudden, Bobby Orr plays for the Calgary Flames, and he's right-handed. I don't know what's going on here, but that is not good enough, and that's going to drive any coach absolutely bananas. And if we saw anything from the previews from the playoffs, you got to wonder what that locker room is like right now. Yeah, so let's talk about one of their keys to success from their postseason run, and it was how absolutely ridiculous their penalty kill was in Edmonton. When you look at the way their penalty kill has struggled so far, uh, they've given up five goals on nine kill opportunities. What do you see? Well, I see that they're not committed. Maybe it's a bit of a new personnel trying to get used to, you know, again, some people want to call it the flush down. Some people call it, you know, like a one, one, two, because you have this wedge in the middle. You have that F2 that just stays right in the middle. He denies all those passes. But right now it's just, it's just disjointed. It was so consistent. You weren't beating them with seam passes. And right now teams are going low and they're going right through their structure. And at times guys aren't reloading back, especially the forwards reloading back to the middle so as we fire up the clips some of it is new guys some of it are guys that just played in the playoffs with them but it isn't consistent so here against the chicago blackhawks you have three guys you got one guy just hugging the boards right that's a three on one down low that's an opportunity right chicago gets it back nobody touches them no problem they move the puck around yarn crow comes up you're not supposed to get beat by that pass in this system zero opportunity Boom, now they're running around. It's a lot of traffic. You get an inside trap off this. Why they do that is because they want to flush you down, right? Look at this. They get bypass again through there. They're, they're just not connected in that area. They're just getting beat by seam passes. Again, flush down, all right? It looks like nothing is dangerous. They kick it up the wall. Look at this running around right now. Now they're set. They're set. Everything's on the perimeter. They're set. They reload to the middle, but not quite a bit because look at the disconnect. East-West pass in the back of the neck. Can goaltending help on those? Absolutely. Here, somebody's got to make a decision and pressure. Nobody pressures. They give them the zone, 
right? They're just, that's fine. You're on the perimeter. They reload. Watch right here. That's where he should be, right in that pocket. And he's not in that pocket. Kulak comes out, doesn't get big in the shot lane. And again, zone entries. Same, similar thing we saw at five on five. Indecision on the kickouts leads to east-west and a tap-in uh, pass for uh, Shifley right there. It's just not good enough. Communication is definitely lacking. Yeah, there's been a whole bunch of things. And I, the PK, like, yeah, you talked last year in the playoffs, 23, 24 straight kills. They lost a couple of pieces off their penalty killing units over the summer. And you kind of see the results here. Uh, let's flip things Four over. Goals, sorry, Todd. Four yeah. goals against in the entire playoff run last year. And then they also had three short end goals. They've given up five in the first three games. Yeah, that is ugly. <laughs> Penalty killing percentage at 44.4% is uh, not good. Their power play should be closer to that number. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Saravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button. Thank you.